Hello, in this example, we will be determining the roof snow load for an emergency vehicle storage garage located in suburban Cleveland, Ohio. The garage is kept at an interior temperature of approximately 38 degrees Fahrenheit and is located on a relatively open site about 30 feet from a taller building that would serve as an obstruction. The garage has a sheet metal roof with a monoslope and a pitch of 1 on 12. In this example, we'll be working from the 2016 edition of the ASCE 7 standard. I should note that there are some major differences between the 2016 edition of the standard and the newer 2022 edition of the standard. If you haven't watched it already, I would urge you to take a look at my presentation titled Basic Snow Loads. This slide comes from that presentation and shows an overview of the process that's used to determine the snow loads. First, we'll determine the ground snow load at the location of the garage, then we'll determine the flat roof snow load for the structure, and then we'll determine the snow load that acts on the sloped roof of the structure. Partial loading, unbalanced loads, drifts, and other detailed snow loads won't be considered in this example. We'll start off with the equation for the flat roof snow load from Chapter 7 of the 2016 edition of the ASCE 7 standard. That's equation 7.3-1. The first coefficient in the equation is the exposure coefficient, C sub E, which is a function of the surface roughness at the site of the structure and the exposure conditions for the roof. With respect to surface roughness, Chapter 7 of the ASCE 7 standard references Chapter 26, which is the first of several chapters in the standard that address wind loads. Since the garage is in a suburban environment and has only one nearby obstruction, we will use a surface roughness category B. With respect to roof exposure, we have the option of classifying it as fully exposed, sheltered, or partially exposed. For this structure, we will classify the roof as partially exposed. Referring to Table 7.3-1 of the 2016 edition of the ASCE 7 standard, we'll reference the first row for a surface roughness category B and the second column for a roof that is classified as partially exposed. With that, we end up with an exposure factor of C sub E equal to 1.0. The second factor in our flat roof snow load equation is the thermal factor, C sub T, which depends on whether or not the building is heated and whether or not the roof is insulated and ventilated. This structure, as a garage, is only moderately heated in the winter with an interior temperature kept just above freezing. Referring to Table 7.3-2 of the 2016 edition of the ASCE 7 standard, the second thermal condition is most applicable to the structure, and we take the thermal factor C sub T equal to 1.1. The third factor in our flat roof snow load equation is the importance factor I sub S, which depends on the occupancy and risk category of the structure. Referring to Table 1.5-1 of the 2016 edition of the ASCE 7 standard, since this structure is used to store emergency vehicles, it would be designated as an essential facility and a risk category 4 would apply. Now referring to Table 1.5-2 of the 2016 edition of the ASCE 7 standard, for a risk category 4 structure, we can determine the importance factor for snow to be 1.20. The last variable in our flat roof snow load equation is the ground snow load, P sub G. We have some options for determining the ground snow load. In this example, I'll use the map snow loads from Chapter 7 of the 2016 edition of the ASCE 7 standard. Looking at the map snow loads for the northeastern United States and Midwest, you can see that Cleveland is just south of Lake Erie, in an area that is designated for a ground snow load of 20 pounds per square foot.
Substituting all of these variables into our equation, we find that the flat roof snow load for our structure would be 18.5 pounds per square foot. Having determined the flat roof snow load for our structure, we next need to consider a sloped roof snow load, P sub S. The sloped roof snow load is equal to the roof slope factor C sub S times the flat roof snow load P sub F. The roof slope factor is determined by using figure 7.4-1 from the 2016 edition of the ASCE 7 standard. With a structure thermal coefficient of 1.1, we'll use figure 7.4-1D shown in the center of this slide. I'll start off by striking a line that corresponds to a roof pitch of 1 on 12, and then determine the value of C sub S by finding the intercept of this line with the charted value of C sub S for our roof. In this case, C sub S is equal to 1 because the roof has such a low slope to it. So for this structure, the sloped roof snow load is the same as the flat roof snow load, 18.5 pounds per square foot. Now we'll consider the minimum snow load. Our structure with a 1 on 12 slope has a roof angle of 4.76 degrees. Since this is less than 15 degrees, we have to consider the minimum snow load P sub M. Since our ground snow load is equal to 20 pounds per square foot, in this case, the minimum snow load is equal to I sub S times P sub G. Substituting into the equation, we find that the minimum snow load is 24 pounds per square foot. Since this is greater than the flat roof and slope roof snow loads, it actually governs for the garage. So the snow loading would be applied to the structure like is shown here. Note that the snow load isn't applied to the actual roof of the structure, but is instead applied to the horizontal projection of the roof of the structure. Now let's change things up a little bit by considering the same garage structure in Cleveland, Ohio, except that now instead of the garage having a sheet metal monoslope roof with a 1 on 12 pitch, let's assume that it has a 4 on 12 pitch instead. The ramification of this change is that with a 4 on 12 pitch, we will now have to consider a sloped roof snow load, whereas with a 1 on 12 pitch, we didn't have to. Since the only thing that changed is the pitch of the roof, the exposure coefficient, thermal coefficient, importance factor, and ground snow load all remain the same, and thus the flat roof snow load remains unchanged at 18.5 pounds per square foot. Next, we'll determine the sloped roof snow load by first determining the roof slope factor, C sub S. We'll return to figure 7.4-1b to determine the roof slope factor, C sub S. And I'll start off by striking a line that corresponds to a roof pitch of 4 on 12, and then determine the value of C sub S by finding the intercept of this line with the charted value of C sub S for our roof. With a pitch of 4 on 12, C sub S is approximately equal to 0 0.86. Note that with a sheet metal roof, we use the dash line, which corresponds to an unobstructed slippery surface. Substituting this value of C sub S into our equation, we find that the sloped roof snow load P sub S is equal to 15.9 pounds per square foot. That snow load would then be applied to the horizontal projection of the roof, as is shown here. The effect of increasing the slope of the roof is that the snow load that the roof is subjected to is reduced, in concept because some of the snow that would otherwise have settled on the roof has instead slid off or blown off of the roof. Again, considering the minimum snow load, since our structure now has a 4 on 12 pitch with a slope angle of 18.4 degrees, which is greater than 15 degrees, we no longer have to consider the minimum snow load P sub M. Finally, since this is a monosloped roof, unbalanced snow loads don't need to be considered, and this represents the final answer. As a closing thought, I'll note that instead of graphically using figure 7.4-1 to determine the roof slope factor, we could instead use interpolation to find the factor with a bit more precision. 
If we use this approach instead, we would find that C sub S is equal to 0 0.8594. Note that there are equations available in the commentary to Chapter 7 of the ASCE 7 standard that correspond to the figures 7.4-1. But while these equations and the interpolation that I've shown here provide more precision in our calculations, bear in mind that these equations are still based on a rather crude model and that any more than two significant digits of precision is probably not justified. As a second closing thought, when we used figure 7.4-1 to determine the roof slope factor C sub S, we used the dashed line which corresponds to an unobstructed slippery surface. But what does unobstructed mean? In some cases, when you have a slope a sheet metal roof, you put on snow guards or snow stops to keep the snow from sliding off. Why would you do this? Well, it protects people on the ground from snow that slides off the roof and that would otherwise hit them. The figure on this slide, the picture on this slide, actually shows snow guards that are attached to the roof near the eaves. And the figure on this slide or the picture on this slide shows snow stops that are attached to the roof in a more distributed fashion. In either case, the goal of uh, using these obstructions on the slippery roof is to keep snow or ice from sliding off the roof and hitting people on the ground or maybe cars that are parked near the building. But in effect, they keep the snow from sliding and actually would increase the sloped roof snow load that we would have to design for.